Hello. Who are you? Doesn't matter. Welcome. You're safe with me. I'll be right here. Nice and close so I can speak without alerting the others. Let me tell you about Senua. Now her story has already come to an end, but now it begins anew. What's happening? It's breathing. Dead. It's breathing. It's breathing. He knows. He knows she's getting closer. He can feel her coming closer. She's getting closer. This is a journey deep into darkness. There'll be no more stories after this one. That intro is what told me that I must not speak over this game while I play. The voices in Cinema's head are more important than I, and they have more to say, oftentimes. I understood immediately that hearing these voices is a critical piece of the gaming experience and one of the main components that make this game successful. For me, Hellblade, there are four main it's aspects of Hellblade, so Cinema's Sacrifice, that really contribute changed. to its success. First it's of these like is gameplay. There are, there are combat sequences and then there are puzzle sequences. Uh, combat is super smooth and surprisingly cool. Uh, while it didn't, the game didn't tell me much about how to do it, how to play it, I was unquestionably far more advanced and competent at the end than the beginning. Even though I didn't receive any specific instructions, very little, uh, I was able to, to figure out a lot of technique and, and become fairly competent by the end. Also, uh, puzzles. I, I felt they were intuitive and also interesting. Now, I like a, a lot of them do involve searching for patterns in the environment, and I kind of enjoyed that personally. I don't know if that's something that's going to speak to everyone that plays it. Uh, but they're very interesting to me. There's also hints such as visual cues to help you along and occasionally there's some hints from the Senua's voices. Uh, one thing I did en enjoy in a, in a way is in the later part of the game there's sort of a new use of darkness, at least to me, as an environment element. Is that the darkness itself is dangerous, not and not because it's simply difficult to see uh, for you, the player, which is uh, what I find is often the case when uh, levels of adventure games are, are dark. Is that it's just hard to see things and not. Uh, the second thing that worked, it this may be even perhaps the the greatest strength of Hellblade, was the sound and atmosphere. As I mentioned already, the sound is amazing. You really should play this game with headphones. Uh, Ninja Theory used a method called binaural recording to create an immersive and intimate listening experience, unlike anything I've ever, exper ever experienced in a video game. The voices sound like they are right next to you, uh, speaking directly into your ear, like they're standing shoulder to shoulder, just speaking in your ear. And this kind of detail uh, uh -huh. makes any moments of silence seem all the more disturbing. Uh, if you oh, did watch my series, or that. if you decide to play it for yourself, she must I strongly, it. strongly encourage you to wear headphones while you play it. Even if you have an amazing surround sound system at home, I just don't think it's going to quite mimic the effects they're looking for. Uh, the third thing that makes this game stand out very strongly is... Feminism. Remember, feminism is the movement towards achieving equality between male and female sexes. Oh, and Hellblade shit. really does a good job of exemplifying this in a few ways. Uh, oh, the most notable thing, uh, particularly if you've darkness, seen some of Ninja Theory's other work, is that reason. Senua is not sexualized or objectified in wrong. any way. Uh, her outfit covers her in a manner fit for a warrior. It will and it would not look odd head, if juxtaposed the of onto the a male model. They also Until don't digitally somehow inflate her breast size so that it looks like she has a large breast or any additional curves 
yeah. underneath the clothing. All so again, she's not sexualized or objectified in any way, really to any degree. It's also, the, the premise of the story is that a warrior has returned home to find it destroyed. Uh, mourning the death of her friend and lover, she takes him to a fitting place to provide a proper burial and free his soul. This kind of thing is an old tale, and this sort of thing usually uh, protagonists, uh, male protagonists, often have the privilege to fulfill, so, especially since you know there's fighting involved, so they have to fight to get to where they want to go. Uh, Ninja Theory changed that, allowed a female to allow a female protagonist to play that, and which shows that the story the can be interchangeable. Last point of that: at no time is her is female existence a plot point or a point of characterization for her. It's all about the darkness, her psychosis. And the last thing I want to note is that uh, Hellblade achieves great emotional impact through simplicity. Uh, we slowly see the story of one broken family unveiled through cinema's struggle with her darkness, her psychosis. The fate of her mother, combined with the abuse of her father, juxtaposed or like placed next to you know the acceptance and love of Dillian served to communicate a small but terribly tragic tale as the events unfold in Senua's mind. A Hellblade, Senua's sacrifice was a fantastic experience in terms of gameplay, immersive environments, and concise emotional storytelling. Well done Ninja Theory. I can't wait to see what you do next.